there, the fright. How do I escape the fright? Let strawberry ice cream be my refuge, where we feel all red and sweet. Oh, the mess. How do I get through the mess? Let strawberry tart be my refuge, where we feel all yellow and red. Yes, God. How do I hide myself from God? Let strawberry pudding be my Let's refuge. Strawberry put where we Let's feel all brown put, and friendly. Let strawberry put oy. Let strawberry put Let strawberry put escape the grim Let's reaper. Put, Let the strawberry put itself be Let's my strawberry refuge. put the Let's grim reaper will put, cut me down. Let strawberry put. There. Let strawberry. Who wants to lose such a constant companion as the Let's self so put, beloved? Who is such a fine kin? Who would give up such a stalwart in abandoning heart, head, and fortune, hands, heart, and chin? Images from the Wars of Religion First image Good St. John up against the wall First image Holding a dicky bird by his little bill Good St. John up the against the wall The bird lays an egg or two First image Right into his palm, he do. Good Saint John, John breaks up the egg. against the wall for his image. own free will. Chris Christ, Good Saint the John, Redeemer up against the wall, the first brickwork. image, and grabs Saint John by his precious. Good Saint John brick, brick up against work. the wall, first John image. is so startled that he clutches at his balls. Good Saint John them up against the wall, right against first the image. wall. God the Holy Father Good comes Saint upon John the scene, up against the wall. That's about First both image. John and Christ getting in between. Good Saint John Christ up pairs the his wall. eyes out. First image. And those of John as well. Flattering Good Saint both John pairs of eyes up against the wall. Against the bloody First wall. image. Next comes the Holy Ghost. Good Saint John from up the against stone the wall to grab First a image. hold of Jesus Christ and also of Saint John. Good Saint John he tears up both against from the wall. Limb. First image. The bird from wing to wing, moving in mysterious ways. He rips them a new thing and smashes every one of them right against the wall. The wall then collapses in upon itself, squeezing out their innards until their dying breath squatting down on top of them until the, bro- the blood runs out of them. On the hill called Kiki stands a keep called Kiki with a peel called Pipi where a lad called Lala plays a sack Good butt Saint called John butt against butt the wall which he blows image. until he shits. Plays a sack far away called John, butt butt against butt. the wall. There's a garden First called image. Gaga, with a tree called Titi. Good Saint John, which a girl against the wall. Tiki. First image. Here's a song called Plays a sack Good Saint John, butt butt against the, the wall. Which First goes, image. Pushes up daisies. Plays a sack on a hill called Kiki. Stands a keep called Kiki, with a peel called Titi, where a boy called Bobo. Plays a sack foot called Butt Butt, which he blows until he shits. First image. And in a faraway Fafa, there's a garden called Gaga, with a tree called Titi, under which a girl called Gigi is the name, the Gigi. tune of Tutu, Gigi. and cries Gigi. herself crazy, Gigi. so she pushes Gigi. up Daisy. Gigi. Gigi. On the mountain, Gigi, mountain Gigi, is its name. Gigi stands a castle. Castle is its name. Gigi, on top of that, a tower. Gigi, tower is its Gigi, name. Gigi, Upon it stands a lad. Lad is its name. Gigi, Barting through his bum. Gigi, bum is its name. Gigi, Barting till he shits. Gigi, all the same. Gigi, In the Gigi, distance, Gigi, distance is its Gigi, name. Like Gigi, the garden. Gigi, garden is its Gigi, name. In which there is a tree, tree is its name, beneath it sits a child, child is her name, listening to a song, song is its name, crying till she bites the skull, all the same, GG. Should the horizon rise and sweep across the sea, aiming for the human heart and watching it within, that is a cry for a nearby aid to 
to help it heal again. Nearby, perhaps, someone of kind, kindly nature, who fortunately isn't considering departure, may extend a helping hand and bid. Extend a so helping hand and bid. bid. Tries and shit. Extend a helping hand and bid. 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 When in the early hours, the coffin opened. Calling me a go hand in the town of dog flesh. Send a helping hand in bid. Instead of taking me. Send a helping hand in bid. Then I sometimes send wonder a whether hand I did. should just take send that helping leap. hand in bid. And then I back out send and send a helping hand in bid. Leap. And no, I don't care. Send a helping hand in bid. Send a helping hand in bid. A sleep while the old helping hand in bid. A delve in the book of life. Send a helping hand in bid. Write at the start of a black chapter. Extend a helping hand and bid. As the great mare galloped by, and as the printer old, extend a helping older, hand and bid. I delve deep into that chapter. Extend a helping hand and bid. The chapter was called a, a helping chapter hand about and bid. Outside, a helping the grim hand reaper, and reaper was approaching indeed. Outside the door of a wor- world of fire, the gray mare galloped past the door, and I, lying deep within my grave, so deep. So it all happened as though in sleep. How bright the light of the world of fire! How, how bright the light the of the world of fire! By. How bright how the light the of the world of fire! How deep is death! How bright the light of the how world of the fire! Whether how white or How bright the light done. of the world of fire! How bright the light of the world of fire! I delved into how the book of life. The world of fire. As the ancient How bright the light of the world of fire! How bright the light of the world of fire! How bright the light of the world of fire! How bright the light of the world of fire! How bright the light of the world of fire! All the chapters. How bright the light of the world of fire! How bright the light of the world of fire! How bright the light of the world of fire! Outside the door. How bright the light of the world of fire! How bright the light of the world of fire! As I lay my grave so deep, dreaming a dream of this, asleep. I dreamed about the world of flame, about the sleeping printer's shame, the black of the book, the green of pain. How gray the mare, how red the heart. I delved deeply while the old printer was asleep into the book of life. And as I delved, a cloud went scudding past, deep and dark. I delved into the chapter about need, marching in. The green rip reaper came marching in, trampling on the vineyard where the grapes of wrath are stored. A gray mare cantered past, a gray mare, mare cantering through history, galloping past me. And now I lie in his grave, in the grave of the printer, and in my own. It seems light. I wonder how come, I wonder how come it all went the way things go, like this. The mare, which one, cantered by on the earth, black beneath, black above, the grim reaper taking his fellow spirit, which, from the printing shop, this was the last sentence in this story, which, the one sitting in the corner, often in tears, because life is so full of knocks and fears, or sitting on the sidelines, who just scream, or sitting on the sidelines, dash their inner dream, or sitting on the sidelines, the only one who understands who, the pain, or sitting on the side knows what's best to avoid again, or sitting on the sidelines, sitting there who, in the corner, sitting crying, on the sidelines, while hand in heart, or sitting on the sidelines, who crush man, or sitting on the side, inwardly dying. Suddenly, for a few split seconds, it actually happens that two hearts beat each other up without even needing arms. When winter comes round one more time, along my width and all my length it fits, then I just say another little rhyme and think of Harry Belly's granny knits. When I think again about my balls, which shrivel and wither in the cold, I shore my troubles up so they don't fall. Springtime, springtime's coming soon, I'm told. Virgin stock is lovely to behold. Beauty is strength in poetry, I'm told. 
The world is lovely when it falls apart and kisses the arse of Skanga, that old fart. Three stars lying in the same grave, one mind, one brow, and one grind. And three corpses flying, galloping full, three one cow, one flying, calf, galloping one bull. full. Three corpses there are three flying, hands galloping which quite full. readily three in the distance flying, flying galloping steadily. full. Three corpses there are three flying, mouths galloping full. Drinking our three so corpses hour flying, long, galloping so full. Of sweet three pain. corpses flying, and galloping by pedally. Three corpses flying, galloping full. Three corpses flying, galloping Three full. objects lying three on the table. Flying, one dog, full. one so Three and corpses tree. flying, galloping Three birds full. flying, three corpses flying. Over canyons and dew as in a dream. Three hares singing the old song. So clear, so dear, so near. And three people freezing in a horrible place are whipping up bitter spoons. Three stones rang up upon a grave, so vain, so vain, so child. Three clouds sank in the same wave, so sad, so glad, so wild. Three hands waving as they're heaving from the distance into view. Three tears glinting and then drying before the pain is stilled. The woman shows herself in convenient pose to the warrior at times in his dream, and he pushes the stripped wonder tree onto the naked wonder so. Behind the ash cans, the woman often offers herself up to the businessman, who smacks her gray backside blue and throws her into the bin. Sometimes, from a height, the wind drops the trumpet from its hands into the waters in the depths to play a marching tune. And people in their darkened rooms go, all go, oh, um, ba, ba. Liver dumpling sitting on his art, drinking from a urine flask. Fondling birdies flying past, fondling birdies all flying past, past. At fondling birdies Dumpling flying past, house to fondling cave. birdies Under flying past, all the way fondling day. birdies flying past, fondling 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 birdies flying past. Fondling birdies flying past, fondling birdies flying past, fondling birdies and flying then, past, fondling birdies flying past, fondling birdies de la flying rue. So in U Nu Nu Travaillon Allure par coincidence Raconte à un client. Et moi, j'ai traversé les clous en dehors des clous. Alors, les flics me rappellent et me disent Vous allez faire le passage de clous de fois. Alors, à la dixième fois, je suis parti en B.I. Sortant de clou, j'étais terrible quand j'étais petit. This note has been kept in the original French for three reasons. It abounds in untranslatable puns, shows how the author handles his adopted language, and affords students of French an opportunity to show off. I agree with Emmett, but can't resist quickly casting my own shadow on it here rather than my own rather than my life. That same night in which Raymond Hans talked to me, which went on for a long time, he told me something based on that nail, 
and his answers to my question about his idea of the nail on the fence was, when the nailing starts up on my fence, my aunt is up like a shot. She's that pious. And then that, that pious. Who's cleanliness. She's that pious. She's that pious. Personified. She's that pious. Gone and she's that the pious. coffee on the street. She's that pious. So that she's who that is, pious. Who, she's who that pious. She's walking along she's the street. Pious. Street fell she's over. Yeah. Pious. Fell head she's that pious. We were also she's there, but only by chance. One could say we chanced upon him, but in addition, he told us something about another patient. He screamed, that nailed me. I go over and see what, what, and what do I see? Nails on the inside, nails on the outside. In that moment came a copper, who as I'm walking away, calls me back and says, please leave before I lick the copper off your nails, off of your nails. That tore me apart twice over, in fact. Nails, of course. I was a feeling a bit nailed up at the time. In Basel on the Rhine, I once saw a large basket full of straw in a lovely shop where you can buy yourself a drink and a bite. There was a lovely shop girl in her pinafore as white as a goose, who was busy unpacking what had been packed in straw and packed into the basket. And I started to hum a little song to myself, so, in my head, I should be what's rustling in the straw. My, what a lovely song. And as this shop girl inside her lovely pinafore unpacked the creatures that were packed in the straw, I unpacked, but all very respectively, just in my mind, of course, the girl from her white pinafore. I that was just like fucking all a very goose. respectively. And instead, my head, in my mind, my naked course, shop girl, the girl from her simple. white pinafore. And I was also getting I unpacked, but all very respectively. From doing the unpacking. Just in my mind, of course. But when I saw the what the naked shop girl was pinafore. unpacking, I Harp unpacked, from France, but all very It was still alive and just in my mind, of water course, in a way that girl from turned my lovely shop of girls. Goose I unpacked and took all very respectively. Skin. Just in my mind, oh, of course, and with girl that from my white naked unpacked pinafore. shop girl disappeared I am completely but from all my very respectively. To be replaced just in my mind of course, by the suffering the heart, girl from her even white though they had pinafore. already completely filled my outer eye, along respectively. with a couple of gray just clouds in mind, which were course, already waiting in front of the shop door as I left. Pinafore. I unpacked my bald head with the cold rain that made Just in my mind, of course, the girl from her white pinafore. Once upon a time, there was a heart that had grown old and gray and emitted a, an odor. It lay there in its glass coffin, and the people walked by. Many of them said something. One said, there's such a strong smell. Another said, it stinks. A third said, it is a stone, a touchstone which tests people. It tests people to see what words they carry about inside them. Whoever has smell inside them says, it smells. Whoever has stench inside them says, it stinks. Whoever has stone inside them says, it is a stone. And then he rode off and raced round and said, that's so that he can see something, so that he can have something to think about and something to look at and see all the junk, all the stuff outside through the window. And the faster he races fast, the fuller the window becomes. But so that he can even see what's outside the window, he himself must be able to see something besides. And that's the other which he always ta takes with him so that he can see it besides, besides that which he sees outside of the train window if he has not just zoomed off in a plane because if he has not brought something to see besides, he will also be unable to see the other, which always shits the porthole full from outside, assuming he has not actually gone by car. Psalm is a Maltese unit of measurement equal to 8.2 bushels. I remarked this to Psalm, the one and only time I met him, in Spurry's room, and he seemed surprised. 
Since this meeting, Tom was killed in an automobile accident in Switzerland. A psalm is also a psalm, salmon, salmon in German. They are caught by people wherever and whenever it is allowed or possible or done. They do this by casting lines at the ends of poles above barbed hooks on which something that entices the salmon is stuck. So there where the salmon, this enormous fish, travels past into the fresh water. They let the trusty fish bite on the enticement with the hook inside, deep into the enticement, down onto the hook, which hooks deep into the front part of the salmon where its mouth is. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly the wicked people with its who mouth are not well on the hook. The, the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. The 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 and the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly with its mouth on the hook. And the salmon is fixed firmly and they tear and tug the soft, fresh innards of the salmon right out from the salmon's inside and throw it away and place the remainder, the outside, in a concave in implement used for frying or boiling animals and plants and cook the salmon's outside inside. And then once the outer salmon is done, they then take it out and eat it and even that little bit of inside which has been cooked with the salmon's outside, that which people refer to as the bones, even that is removed from the outside, cast aside and stamped on frequently to the words, leave it alone, children, it'll tread in. It's good for the carpet. It is lovely and burned, even when the sun doesn't shine, because then perhaps it's raining. But even when it isn't raining, it's lovely, especially then when the sun shines, but also when you walk in the rain. If our occasion the sun is not shining, down along the river, which is there called the Error, and which also flows through the small town of Solotern, which is also very lovely, especially lovely without a doubt. When you walk down along the river there in the sunshine, but it's especially lovely in Basel, very special when the sun shines there on the river, which is called the Rhine, and you can walk along it and see how lovely it is there. When it turns winter and the snow falls, and you see the black word Gex on the white paper, it makes you think of the ravens. You can actually hear them screeching, peck, peck, peck. They are that hungry, or so you think. And at once you think of Snow White lying in her crib, wailing hideously, and it occurs to you that all the blood in the fairy tale could be left out for once. And so you press mentally a cake into screaming Snow White's hand, and the dear little child messes around with it amidst the white bed linen until everyone is beautifully 
mucky because the cake has become totally mushy and already you are thinking of the coming thaw that helps, especially when you've just been thinking about the thought who would in fact have been reintroduced have reintroduced blood into the story because he was very fond of children, not only nicely roasted but simply raw and at the end of a night. And you are on the point of thinking he'll flash away that little child and then the blood will have returned once again. But then luckily the ravens interrupt your thoughts with their shriek, these lucky ravens which call cakes and cookies, cakes and cookies. And now the baby in Snow White's crib, who is also called in fact Snow White, has its mushy cake back in its hands and it gets a cookie as well and it continues to make a mess. And there's the thaw outside and such a merry mucky messing about inside that even you too are glad and think there you are instead of, instead of continuing to put up with Todd's tales about his knife and the blood it's perfectly all right to tell yourself and the children a bit about snow white during warm winter weather when it thaws with a soft cookie and a mushy piece of cake in your hands In Amsterdam, I was visited by a friend who was hitchhiking back to Paris and who bravely undertook to carry the 10 pounds of glue to my room. This is the glue I subsequently poured into the flexible apparatus described in number 16. I am now in the happy position of being able to announce that my worries about glue are about to disappear. It was at the Bazaar de l'Hotel de Ville. It was at the that Bazaar I de l'Hotel de Ville. Araldi it was at the Golden Bazaar America de l'Hotel de, de Ville. Which it was at the Bazaar had already de l'Hotel de Ville. Not by name. It was at the Bazaar de l'Hotel de Ville. Which I can confirm that the Bazaar at l'Hotel de Ville. Which I can confirm that the Bazaar at l'Hotel de Ville. It was at the Bazaar de l'Hotel de Ville. It was During at the trip bazaar to Basel where Felix de Lou was born de and lived for 16 and a half years. It was at the bazaar years. de l'Hotel de Ville. It was at the bazaar de l'Hotel de Ville. It was at the de bazaar de l'Hotel de Ville. The de l'Hotel de Ville. It was at the bazaar de l'Hotel de Ville. It was at the bazaar de l'Hotel de Ville. It was at the bazaar de l'Hotel de Ville. De l'Hotel de Ville, which made me it think that, that the French Art Dufresne tried in Ville without an art. It was at the bazaar if they ever started lo- using a Raldite for pasting posters. When I see outside on the ferry down in Basel, up on the Rhine, the sign sitting there that says Lou and painted on it a line with its twice two limbs, two legs, and two arms, I start to see two Lou's before me for all those twos and when later in the winter I glue a piece of transparent paper over two cherries that are printed in two colors on yellow cards I can think up all manner of things in the evening before going to sleep such as when I glue a piece of transparent paper over two cherries and when I think to myself that I have two cherries in my mouth and when in addition I myself am two loos and two cherries here inside of my head. And then when I let myself swim across the Rhine in the form of two loos, each with two cherries in its mouth, is the Rhine there really yellow? And is it summer or does it just seem that way? And is a lion really a vegetarian? And does it love children or does it just pretend to? Come, spirit of the sonnet, give my pain a voice in sonnet form which fattens swine and mouth half dead as a lament of mine that sweeps across the pastures of the plain atop the mountains where I cl- clamor free and agile over every stony rock on wings of song untroubled as the flock without the torments that are driving me to set hand on myself and put an end at last to endless pain while I regale 
the rhythmic drumming of their wagging tails, pounding a sonnet for me as I leap on shit-encrusted feet to higher realms and grasp the pain the sonnet overwhelms. Miniature demons that have crept into the world of flora and lurk among the reeds Himbaro danger can become dangerous to humans like the little mushroom in the forest, the little mushroom in the grove or woodland, so da da dangerous. A conversation lets us listen in listen in, gather knowledge in our our open knowledge thirsty hands. Perhaps who knows? And who knows? A. Miniature demons lurking among the reeds can become as dangerous as a little mushroom in the forest. B. Like mushrooms in general, in the forest and the meadows, that's how dangerous the lurkers among the reeds can be. If they are miniature demons, they can sometimes be dangerous to humans, just like a mushroom that is poisonous or old working inside the human body and killing from within and so the human sinks among the reeds where they kill him these evil little creatures called miniature demons they just pass by both of them so farewell to both of you and thanks for the welcome advice see pause they always come in twos and they talk about demons and humans Let's listen in on them, cupping a knowledge-thirsty empty hand to an open ear. These miniature demons lurking among the reeds can be very dangerous to us humans and can affect us as mortally as the little mushroom in the forest. B. Just as the little mushroom works with the human body, so too does the miniature demon, that evil creature, work among the reeds. And just like that little mushroom in the forest, the human sits among the reeds until he is dragged down. Like the little mushroom wishing into the abyss, he is dragged down into the mire. As soon as the two of them have passed on by, having made us experts on mushrooms and humans, along come another two, talking about humans and mushrooms. Let's listen in on them, paw to the ear, to the ear hole. A. Apart from mushrooms, humans are at risk from any miniature demons lurking among the reeds, as deadly as any little mushroom in the forest. B. They work inside the human body the way they infiltrate the reeds, and as with the mushroom in the forest, the person is forgotten. The person in the reeds, as soon as he disappears and gets swallowed up in the demon's groundless realm, Monsieur Mud disappeared and swallowed up. They're passing by. Thank you, too. And you listeners, you can't take your by. hands from your ears Thank now. Thank you, too. So that you the listeners, superfluous you passing can by. Away. Thank you, Farewell. Too. And you listeners, first baritone. One who would one day come to serve me well. Who would or one so day come to serve me one well. dreadful night? Who would one Just day come to serve me that well? Who would one day come to serve me Who would one day come to serve me well? May I serve you well? Who would one day come to serve me well? Second baritone. She said she would. She told me she would serve. She told you she would serve today, tomorrow, if you're not too down. Or later, maybe, when you're really down. Day, tomorrow, she serve if you're you not so that too you down. Would later serve. Or later, Third maybe, baritone. when you're really down. Today, Day, you may, tomorrow, yes, if you're not serve too down. Today, please do. Or later, maybe, so that when you're really day, down. In day, future, tomorrow, I may if you're serve. not too down. My pleas will be or your Or later, welcome. maybe, when you're really down. Will that do? Day, tomorrow, if you're not too down. Or That's later, baritone. maybe, when you're really down. Sure, but Day, the finest tomorrow, awesome if you're not would too be down. Tears. The tears I always shed when I do serve. And so she served and started to shed tears. All four. She who would one day come to serve me well. 
the only one who'd seek out such a hell, came to me on a dark and gloomy night and took me under contract just for spite, only to sap my joys of life away so that once stooped I'd wake up one fine day and look around to find my life astray and look For around to find my life was, astray got me trapped. look around to find Into my life astray that was firmly and look around wrapped. to find my life astray so she could cry look foul around and to find my life astray and look around to find my life astray but she always smiles and asks politely so I must give in and act uprightly When Mighty Mouse must mess around to make Mac Moon make misers moan, to make Who Mac Moon me make slice of misers moan, to make Mac Moon in ponderous pee, to muff your murderously messy mouth of giggling goblin goony goose, of giggling goblin goony goose, farting of giggling goblin goony goose.